Hello and welcome to part three of my Bevy user input series. In this episode, I'll be covering the mouse. First, I'll cover how to get access to the mouse in your Bevy application. Then I'll cover how you would get the buttons that have been clicked on the mouse since the last frame. I'll then cover the raw input that you can analyze, the movement of the mouse in the physical location, the mouse wheel's rotation, the mouse cursor position on the screen inside your window, and then some examples of where you might use each of these pieces of information. To get access to the mouse in your Bevy application, the first thing you need to do is include the Bevy input plugin. This can be done directly or by using the Bevy's default plugins. Bevy provides an enum in its prelude called mouse button. This enum has the variants left, right, middle, and other that contain a U16 to distinguish the non-standard keys found on gaming mice. Unlike key codes, the value stored in the other variant is manufacturer dependent and is not in any way influenced by the position of the button on the mouse, though there may be some conventions that are similar between the same manufacturer and different mice in their lines. Because some manufacturers, such as Logitech, allow you to configure what these keys do, it is not best practice to use these keys as standard gameplay inputs. It is still possible to allow the user to select these in a configuration, but I would not recommend binding them by default. The only time I would bind these keys by default is for debug purposes. This frees up crucial keys on the keyboard that you may otherwise have had bound to debug purposes. This is a good approach because it means that you don't have to worry about losing standard keys that you know everyone will have, and instead only specialized users would have access to your debug keys. If you need to know what button the user is pressing on their mouse, you can use the resource input mouse button. This uses Bevy's provided input struct that allows you to query what keys have been pressed and released or currently being held. This is covered in more detail in part one of this mini series if you like more detail. Similar to keyboard inputs, if you need to keep track of the order that keys are pressed, it is possible to include the mouse button input event and iterate over that. If you would like to track how the mouse is moving in the real world, you can include the mouse motion event. This event will give you access to how the mouse has been moved each update which is sent by the operating system to your game. The mouse event responds to the physical motion of the mouse. This means that you still receive these events even if the cursor is not over the window or if the cursor has been locked in place. If this is not desired behavior, you use the cursor events instead. These are covered later on in this video. As an example of where you would use mouse motion as opposed to cursor events is in a first person game where you want to lock the cursor to the center of the screen but yet still update the camera's pitch and yaw based on how the mouse moves. The final input that Bevy provides inside its input plugin is the mouse wheel. This is accessed by including mouse wheel struct. When you iterate over this event, you will get access to how the mouse wheel has moved by the event sent by the operating system, denoted as an X, Y motion and the unit that the measurement was taken in. This being either lines or pixels. Most mice only have a Y direction scroll, but in some rare mice, it is possible to get a sideways or X direction scrolling. I personally have had a mouse that had this feature. It allowed you to push the scroll wheel left or right and would then scroll accordingly. I've not yet seen a mouse that has true scrolling, but instead just simulated left, right with a button push. In most cases, it is safe to ignore the mouse scroll X as very few users will have this feature. If your game requires the current location of the cursor in your game's window, you can keep track of that by using mouse motion yourself, but it is much easier and simpler to include Bevy's window plugin. This is also included as part of the default plugins. When you add this plugin to your app, you get access to a handful of cursor events, such as cursor moved and cursor entered. These events can be used to keep much better track of the cursor and what window it is currently interacting with. These events are used with simple event readers and are included in Bevy's prelude. The cursor moved includes the window ID and an XY location that the cursor is currently at, with the bottom left of the screen being 00. zero. Cursor entered simply includes the window ID that the cursor just went into. There are a handful of other cursor events and window events that you might find useful, but these are mostly made redundant by using the inputs plugin. 
and would only be necessary if you didn't intend to include this. Cursor events are also only sent when the cursor is over the corresponding window. This means that it is not possible to track where the mouse is outside of the window, like you could potentially do using mouse motion. That was a lot of information to take in. It's time to move on to some examples. In the GitHub repository below, you will find my Bevy Basics repository, which contains a bunch of examples that I refer to in these videos. By changing the input example that the user input plugin is representing, you will change which information is logged in the debug console. Then once you wait, in, you can press page up and page down to change which mode it is in. For now, I am starting in mouse click mode. The, as you can see, when I clicked, I got, I pressed the left and then I printed out the console left. And then I released left. The first response in the console is from iterating over the mouse input event, which contains the button type and what I did with the button. The next one you see is what Bevy's input resource is relaying as I am printing out all keys that are just pressed. And this is why when I release, I get an input release event, but don't get a print release click. I can also right click and middle click and other two click. But if I press the other two keys on my mouse that are directly used by the mouse, which are my DPI up and DPI down, they do not send inputs to the game because the mouse itself does that logic. This is why it's not reliable to use the inputs on the actual mouse. By pressing page up or page down, I can change my mode. As now I am now set in mouse click mode. Okay, if I press page up, I now am in mouse move mode. As I move the mouse around, as you can see, I get lots of mouse events indicating how many pixels the mouse has moved. Weirdly enough, because this is sent by the operating system, moving the mouse slowly results in a huge number of one or negative one events, depending on the direction you move your mouse. It is actually quite difficult to get higher than ones. And this is to do with the fact that the operating system is sending these events really fast to your game while your game is only updating once every 60th of a second. You are getting significantly more inputs from the mouse than that. This is why it is given as an event and not a fixed unit. It's because the... Uh, Anyway, page down, on to the next thing. Mouse scroll, same thing goes with the mouse scroll. As you can see, I can control the Y, negative and positive, and if I scroll really quickly, I can get like a negative four. It's also in lines. I'm not sure how you change it from line to pixels. I believe that's an operating system setting. Cursor mode. In this mode, you'll see that I am printing out the window ID <laughs> and the location of the mouse on that window being zero, 00 the bottom corner here and whatever window size the top. Uh, in the description you'll find a link to the GitHub repository for the Bevy Flycam which is what I have open now. In the Flycam you'll find an example of how you would use a physical motion of the keyboard to iterate and control the camera even though it is locked in place. This plugin seems to be old and not updated in such a way that it still uses the events as opposed to the event readers that Bevy implemented after version 5. I'd like to give a huge thank you to KFU2012 for suggesting Unsplash for my stock pictures. They have a really nice licensing agreement that basically says you're free to do whatever the fuck you want except directly compete with them with their photos. And since I asked in my previous video for a suggestion for where to get stock photos, he came through amazingly with the suggestion that like hit my needs perfectly. So I would just like to thank you very much for suggesting Unsplash. It's exactly what I needed. Okay. Uh, and on that, don't forget to uh, like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff so you don't miss the rest of this mini series and i intend to do a tutorial video on how to use my animation plugin for bevy next before i continue this series uh, because someone requested it on discord and you know requests get priority over non-requested stuff but yeah thank you for all the support it's been amazing i'm up to 400 subscribers so thank you all so much and i'll see you in the next episode